This is a building uh, for the Royal Meteorological Observatory of Belgium. They expect uh, to get here a geomagnetic observatory with uh, four different devices inside and uh, they came last year to make a survey to define the place, the location of this observatory at about 400 meters from the station and uh, they said okay for us this is important because uh, it will be a long-term uh, measurement in Antarctica. They, they told us you know do it well because we want this observatory for 100 years here. So we are standing here in front of uh, the Magnetic Observatory of Dourbe and uh, you see behind you buildings which are carefully made in a non-magnetic material because what a Magnetic Observatory wants to uh, register is uh, unpolluted geomagnetic field and this measurement is made uh, seven days a week, uh, 24 hours a, a day with a very high sampling rate which can go at uh, 10 measurements per second. So what we measure is a vector, so each measurement uh, uh, contains three uh, quantities. Uh, for instance, it may be the declination, magnetic declination, magnetic inclination and the magnetic uh, modulus, the total field. We also make uh instruments that make automatic measurements of the magnetic field, the inclination and the declination. And that is up till now something that needed to be measured manually. We made a robot that can measure this. What is so special about this robot is that all the small parts, everything needs to be built up but with non-magnetic uh, material. Also for the, the motors it's very uh, explicit and very specific that they are non-magnetic otherwise we can't measure the magnetic field the earth magnetic field is very uh, low so it's very difficult to construct these instruments when the possibility came for us to also make magnetic observation in the Belgian Antarctic base of course we jumped on the occasion and uh, what uh, we did uh, this year and last year is starting set to set up a magnetic observatory um, in the uh, Antarctic station Princess Elizabeth. Um, a, a big part of the work has been already finished since uh, we have been able to install buildings in the Princess Elizabeth base. Not big buildings like this one, but um, you will see in the interview uh, that it's a rather modest uh, hut made of fiberglass, but with a modern technology we are not now able to deploy a magnetic observatory which is much smaller, while at the same time it has much higher performances. So what uh, we have uh, attained until now, until uh, um, our scientists went there, is that we have a recording of the magnetic field inside the Princess Elizabeth available uh, almost in real time uh, for one measurement every uh, second. So for me it was my first experience at Antarctica and it was a very nice one and uh, it's it's really adventurous. You arrive in this, this, this weird desolated place and then you arrive in uh, uh, Princess Elizabeth where you have all the luxury but once you go outside you're really isolated. The work we did there is basically, uh, when I arrived, they were constructing the radome for me. It was nearly finished. They installed, they need, still needed to finish it. I have to explain that this radome is at 500 meters of the Princess Elizabeth because we can't have too many uh, influences of the magnetic field. Um, 500 meters was a challenge for the people there because they needed to supply power and also um, a good line to go to the internet. So they needed to make a line of 500 meters in, uh, in the ice. This was a real challenge. We, when I arrived, I, I helped the people there. And when we, uh, 
branched it to to everything everything worked fine so we were pleased after that i can could do the real work i needed to do that was instra installing two small instruments in this radome um, I, I placed a variometer that measures the daily vari uh, variations of the earth magnetic field I also installed another instrument called the proton magnetometer. This is measuring the strength of this field. And these measurements are directly uh, transmitted after the measurement to the internet, again to our intranet, and it arrives here after 5, uh, uh, 15,000 kilometers of traveling. It arrives here at Durba and we can follow every second what's happening on Antarctica on the magnetic field. So what we see here are two instruments. One is this one that Theodor did with the uh, flux gate. It's basically to measure manually the inclination and the declination of the magnetic field. It's used to measure two angles, like I say, the declination and the inclination. One is the horizontal one and the magnetic field also has a vertical angle. In a normal station like this, we always use manual measurements to do this. But here in Durbe, we constructed this one. It's doing exactly the same thing, but it's fully automatically. And as we go to places where, like Antarctica now, where there is no, uh, during seven months, there is no personal, they, don't, uh, they can't do it manually. So we need something automatically. And this makes this, uh, instrument very unique. It's one of its kind. We have now four in the world and it is completely robotized and it can send the data over the internet to wherever we are. It's called the GyroDiff because it uses a gyroscope to, or, uh, to find uh, the first direction of the NART and to position the instrument correctly to do its measurement. So all these pieces are made of non-magnetic material that we have to order and then we construct and we build it really everything our own. Even the, the screws and everything is made here. You can also see in that box all these cards are made here. So all this box is constructed here and all the electronical parts are made by us. So this instrument that is robotized is the is made in Durbe, but it's also actually the only place that builds this kind of instruments. So it's very unique, and we trying to test them everywhere in the world. We went to different places, but Antarctica is one of the biggest challenges to place our instruments and to go further into deeper testing of this product. We are going, uh, now going to see uh, a room where we make all these non-magnetic pieces. So they have to be non-magnetic, so we need to home build this. Uh, one uh, very important question is uh, why are we uh, going to install a magnetic observatory in the Princess Elizabeth station? Um, of course, uh, for me as a scientist, the obvious uh, answer is it's a scientific curiosity. We want to know what the magnetic field is doing, uh, how the magnetic field is uh, configured around the earth and especially in a place like uh, Princess Elizabeth Station where there is a big gap in the observatory coverage. We know that um, the magnetic field is the only signal coming from inside the deep interior 
And so that's uh, our main uh, scientific uh, uh, motivation to install a magnetic observatory there. Of course, this uh, may not be cutting much ice with our paymasters, as um, this kind of operation is extremely expensive. So we uh, also look into applications in the uh, public and in the industrial world. The magnetic field is actually a big navigation system, a global navigation system, which uses a very simple instrument, which is called a magnetic compass. It's uh, cheap, uh, reliable, doesn't need any power, and works everywhere, works always. Um, and this navigation system needs only one thing, it's to know the magnetic declination in the different places where it is operated. And that's precisely what the magnetic observatory do, is measure this magnetic declination. And um, the network of magnetic observatories, which are uh, laid all, all over the world, uh, allow the computation and the design of maps, which will give this magnetic declination as a worldwide map over uh, space. Some people would say that uh, for navigation um, nowadays people use the GPS system um, and it's true, uh, GPS is a very precise navigation system but um, one thing one should note is that the GPS gives you only the location whereas the magnetic compass is uh, providing you directional information, it provides you with a direction. Um, moreover, there are uh, some very important applications where GPS signals are not available. For instance, underwater navigation, uh, if you are deep uh, under the surface of the ocean, you will not be able to get the signals from the GPS satellites. Um, other important application is drilling, uh, ice core drilling or uh, drilling for finding minerals or for oil and gas. Uh, those operations use uh, a magnetic compass also because uh, once they are deep inside the crust of the earth it's impossible for them to get a, a GPS signal. So um, they need actually a magnetic observatory close by in order to do a good um, direction finding. Um, Another thing that one uh, uh, hears from time to time is people telling ah, uh, it is not necessary to do measurements there because I can find this information on the internet. And of course it's true, uh, internet nowadays uh, can provide online calculators and can provide uh, uh, maps. But this, this information is available only because some people have been there measuring uh, for a long time and have been making maps and that's only why you can find it on the internet. The question also is why specifically in Princess Elizabeth station should we do the measurements uh, since there are other observatories available. Actually uh, in the vicinity of Princess Elizabeth station there are not many observatories. The closest observatory is Sayowa Japanese station some more than 2000 kilometers away. Um, so, uh, Princess Elizabeth uh, Observatory will plug a big hole in the uh, maps of the observatories. Another uh, important aspect of magnetic observatories is that they are able to uh, monitor the space weather of planet Earth. Uh, you know, space weather is mainly influenced by solar activity and from solar particle, energetic particles coming from the sun and these uh, penetrate to the earth mainly at the poles and therefore uh, Princess Elizabeth station with uh, uh, sophisticated monitoring capabilities of the magnetic field will uh, serve for uh, now casting and forecasting space weather. Actually uh, nowadays uh, some colleagues here in Dorb are already using the uh, Princess Elizabeth magnetic field information for uh, space weather modeling. So in the vicinity of Princess Elizabeth, uh, we know uh, that there is a, a lot of activity going on, a lot of expeditions, people are traveling around. And so um, 
it is important to have a good measurement of the magnetic field information there for their navigation purpose. Uh, we should not forget that uh, a modern navigation system like GPS can uh, break down or can get in a low battery status and then it's of course very important to be able to rely on a backup system and a magnetic field uh, declination is such a system which is available. Um, the declination value in uh, Princess Elizabeth is extremely high, it's uh, more than 38 degrees west, so it means that uh, a huge correction must be applied to the magnetic compass there. And of course if the cor correction is not um, applied in the right way, it will lead to big errors in navigation. Uh, it's not only the high value which is important there, but also the fact that this value is changing fairly rapidly over space. For instance, in Georg von Neumeyer station, uh, barely uh, uh, 1200 km away, uh, this correction is uh, uh, less than 15 degrees west. Another important uh, uh, thing that we should note about why making measurements in uh, Princess Elizabeth is that uh, uh, it's our task to measure the magnetic declination, the magnetic field over the territory of Belgium and since uh, we consider that Princess Elizabeth is a little part of Belgium, we uh, are available by uh, royal decree to do this uh, measurement in this little part of Belgium. Another important application of our observatory there is as a testing ground in extreme weather condition for our instrumentation, for instance the auto diff which we can see here will be deployed there and this is a proof of uh, uh, working, a proof of uh, ability to work in extreme conditions for people who may be interested in uh, purchasing this instrument. Um, actually we already have an order for this instrument in uh, uh, Juan Carlos I Estación in Livingston Island on the Antarctic Peninsula. Another um, reason to build a magnetic observatory in Princess Elizabeth is uh, uh, the principle of reciprocity. Uh, in Antarctica it is uh, usual to exchange the data between different countries, different teams, different uh, stations and so it is considered something important to be able to uh, put at the disposal of people doing magnetic survey or marine survey, put at their disposal records of the magnetic field which have been uh, done in uh, Princess Elizabeth.